got thumbs up. Cool. Hi, man. Hey. Hey, um, I'm just curious, but uh, what's got you out here to City Hall joining me to oppose the Joint Terrorism Task Force? And who are you? What do you, what do you guys look Well, sure. Uh, I work with a group called Iraq Veterans Against the War. I also work with a group called Veterans for Peace. And uh, in the past, we've had uh, the FBI persecute us as peace activists. They've infiltrated our groups and sent in provocateurs and spy on us generally. And uh, I'm pretty opposed to that. Like, I don't think it's right for our government, who are just legally, uh, constitutionally trying to change around, um, addressing our grievances towards them. Yet they send people after us to infiltrate us. Um, so I'm out here trying to prevent the city of Portland from getting a closer relationship with the Joint Terrorism Task Force, which would basically uh, deputize Portland police officers to carry out federal law. So um, I was quite disappointed uh, because I was uh, hoping, you know, uh, I have a lot of anxiety about this thing, you know, sure, I'm, sure. because I, I just want it to be over with so I can adjust to having a secret police force in my town or not. <laughs> um, so can you uh, give us a little background on what happened? You know, apparently there's so much snow on the ground you know, that uh, they can't show up, right? Well, so here's what happened is um, yesterday at 2 o'clock, uh, Mayor Adams, uh, he made an announcement at his office. It was around 2 p.m., right, sometime around 1 or 2. And uh, he said, I'm recording this, um, that uh, we are going to delay the hearings for the Joint Terrorism Task Force because uh, there's probable weather issues, but also that the contract that they were planning on drafting wasn't quite ready yet. Um, so I contacted one of my uh, activist friends who's been helping me plan this, and he says, well, you know, I think there's more to that story there. And I said, what do you mean? And he explains that uh, he believes that what's going on is, uh, and I believe this now too, that instead of the city asking the question, you know, should we join the Joint Terrorism Task Force, um, the mayor would rather have us comment on an already drafted contract. And unfortunately, that contract was not drafted already, and so next in two weeks when the rally is going to be on March 10th at uh, 1230 p.m. here at uh, City Hall um, yeah. we'll actually yeah. be commenting on a contract a formalized yeah. contract rather than just the validity of even drafting the contract so that's that's the difference that's what's going on and they use the excuse that well maybe there's some snow that's gonna fall but it's bogus he's trying to draft this contract and have the city talk about that and not the validity of if we should even draft the contract Okay, so I'm out here on the street interviewing more people. Uh, so, uh, basically, uh, tell the nice folks on YouTube your name if you feel like it, and uh, why do you oppose joining the Joint Terrorism Task Force here in Portland? Um, my name is Allison, and I'm opposed to the Joint Terrorism Task Force because I value my civil rights, and I'm not okay with our police being connected with the FBI. I'm not okay with wiretaps or, you know, looking into people's... Um, personal lives, so, yeah. So you think it's an infringement on our civil liberties? Then? Yes. Okay. And uh, would you encourage people to come out and do this? I mean, how does it feel? I mean, do you enjoy activism? Oh, I love activism. It's, you know, how can you not be active whenever the world's in such chaos, you know? That's kind of how I feel. Cool. Thanks. So I'm out here still interviewing people about why they uh, oppose rejoining the Joint Terrorism Task Force. Say why you're here. My name is Elena Melville and I'm here because I oppose the Joint Terrorism Task Force coming back to Portland. I think that that's definitely a bad move for the people of Portland, the people of Oregon, and for our civil liberties. The, the FBI has shown that they're more interested in this realm in spying and in perpetuating violations of our civil liberties than they are in actually protecting the rights of people. And I think that we need to stand up and and let them know that we don't want the Joint Terrorism Task Force in Portland, that we have enough issues here with police accountability and oversight that we, uh, um, we don't need to bring that element into our community. Um, awesome. Hey, what do you think of the psychological justification for this whole rejoining the Joint Terrorism Task Force, specifically uh, Mohammed Osman uh, Mohammed's uh, court case? Have you researched any of this? Yeah, yeah, I feel like it's really blatant trickery and what happened with him was very much entrapment and what the information that came out when the FBI was arguing for the Joint Terrorism Task Force revealed that there was no real threat with that whole situation and I, 
it's a great example of exactly why we don't want the Joint Terrorism Task Force here. We don't need these types of types of efforts that are um, where the FBI is not really investigating, but they're instigating. And yeah, I, I just find it to be completely counter to intelligence and to uh, you know good common sense. And it, 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 sure, I don't know. To me, when I saw that that whole story play out, it was very clear that that it was entrapment and that this was a troubled young man who needed to have access to to guidance. And, yeah, um, I mean, not not necessarily guidance, but. Definitely guidance. I think he needed somebody to like uh, help him positively express his anger. There's there's many ways to express your anger that that's not gonna you know uh, lead to violence. Exactly. Exactly. You know? So I think guidance is a perfect a perfect way to. Yeah. He. What happened was he was guided, but he was guided into a more aggressive and violent realm, and his ideas and thoughts were taken to a level that they didn't need to sure. go. And I don't think they would have gone to if he was left to his own devices. Something that I find uh, interesting is. Uh, if you read through uh, some of the FBI's unsworn affidavits, okay, they, they claim that they were recording every phone conversation with Mohammed Osman Mohammed uh, with multiple recording devices, meaning at least three, because you know it, it, they would say two if it was right. 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 So in the pivotal conversation where they offered him five five ways that he could serve Islam, you know, mm -hmm. uh, you could uh, make money for charity, or you could uh, you know participate in. Uh, 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 sending money to uh, other countries that, for money, you know, to, to raise money to help people, or you could become operational. Okay, the FBI claims that, you know, somehow uh, they uh, misplaced that, that pivot, pivotal conversation that, that, that has to do with his entrapment defense. Weren't they saying that there was some sort of technical Yes, technical problem? difficulty. Isn't so that convenient? The dog ate my homework Isn't excuse, that yes. Yeah. Yes. So I mean that that's one of the things that makes me, makes me think that he was an unwitting patsy, basically. Yeah, yeah, I think. I mean, well, he was just a kid too. I sure. Mean, Nineteen years old. Come on. Sure. And here he's like, yeah, uh, recruited into a fake cell and completely empowered and enabled into a violent and uh, sure a violent and aggressive realm. That, Some, something know? else too is that they they okay they had him build a fake bomb. They helped him build a fake bomb. Now, if he knew how to build a real bomb, he would have been able to know the difference. You know, so that proves that um, basically he didn't even have the mental capacity to build a bomb on his own in the first place. Yeah. You know, so if they build a fake bomb with him, you know, and then he doesn't notice that it's a bunch of, you know, empty 55-gallon drums of plastic. Right, right. right. Well, I here mean, we have the FBI, too, perpetuating violence, perpetuating terrorism, and actually creating the types of situation that they're supposed supposedly diffusing. So sure. it's really... They're protecting us from them. It doesn't make uh, any themselves. sense. You know, cool. we, we don't need that element. We don't need that element in Portland. We don't need that element anywhere in the United States. And we're seeing um, activists and Muslim and Arab communities being attacked all over the country. And it's, sure. you know, we, we need to stand up and fight back, you know. Mm -hmm. we it, have, our civil liberties are at stake. Absolutely. And thank you for standing up for my civil liberties. <laughs> Just say no. <laughs> So I'm conducting uh, more interviews with people out here uh, opposing the Joint Terrorism Task Force. And, uh, well, basically, man, why are you here? Uh, yeah, my name's Adam. I work with the Oregon Jericho Movement and uh, Portland Central America Solidarity Committee and uh, several other organizations. Um, and also just as a concerned citizen that I've come out to show my support in opposition to the JTTF. We're out here um, with signs and we're passing out flyers. We're going to be back out here March 10th to make sure that the city... Um, decides not to rejoin the Joint Terrorism Task Force. Portland, Oregon was the first city to drop out in 05, and so it makes perfect sense that we keep the situation that, that very way. Um, the reasons that we oppose Joint Terrorism Task Force um, has um, a lot of nuanced reasons for that. Um, one of the simple reasons, though, is that we don't believe that we should be spending money, taxpayer money, and resources and whatnot to be um, having all the different intelligence agencies collaborating with the police and ICE and FBI, Homeland Security and whatnot, because we know very well, historically and contemporarily in the United States, that there's a very, very bad and evil and disgusting track record of human rights violations that have been um, acted upon by specifically FBI programs doing surveillance and spying, and they've gone after communities of color um, ever since 9-11, specifically communities that are 
um, of the Muslim faith or people of Arab background. That also includes African American communities. Uh, the Portland 7 case would be a case in point here in Portland, including the incarceration of political prisoner Patrice Lemoon before. Awesome. Hey, um, this is a side issue uh, other than the JTTF, I guess, but um, um, you mentioned uh, Immigration and Customs Enforcement, uh, so you provoked me to ask you a question. Have you heard of something called uh, the End Game Plan? End Game Plan? Yeah. It's, uh, a, it's an ICE plan. It's a contingency plan for a quote-unquote immigration emergency. It's basically a uh, internment camp system set up. Right. Have well, you heard of this? Uh, like, I, I mean, I've, I've heard mention of it, so I can't speak to it very well. But what I can generally say, again, is when we talk about um, ICE collaboration with the local police and we talk about ICE detention centers, that they definitely very much fit into um, the same discussion that we were just having about the Joint Terrorism Task Force. They play a part in that, which has to do with going after um, people that are um, you know, foreign-born, um, people of uh, Muslim faith people of color and again further exacerbates the tensions that we have within the country about stereotypes regarding people that are so-called um, illegal aliens and when you look at you know the history of the United States it's always been a history of, of immigration and migration so it seems ridiculous that we would actually have um, these kind of different apparatus state apparatus set up to go after these people when in fact really what would seem logical is that we're not only welcoming people into this country, but helping them to make some transition, especially those folks that are coming from a uh, war-torn part of the world um, and impoverished parts of the world, and they've tried to come to the United States, um, you know, for uh, a different life. But instead, many of them are locked up in these ICE detention centers. And again, also relates to the larger issue of the prison industrial complex and mass incarceration in the United States, where what, whereby we have over... Two million people that are locked up in prison. Many of them are specifically people of color, Native American, African American, um, Latino, Latina. So high rates of black and brown people. Um, and this all definitely relates to ICE detention center because it does have to do with the politics um, of identity. Hey, how's it going? Thanks, man. You know. Sorry.